So, tonight, I want to uh, uh, share with you dealing with the spirit of Laban. Somebody said dealing with the spirit of Laban. From the scriptures, in the book of Genesis, let's go to the book of Genesis 29 from verse 12. Okay. And Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's brother. And that he was Rebekah's son. And she ran and told her father. And it came to pass when Laban, somebody said Laban. And it came to pass when Laban heard the tidings of Jacob, his sister's son, that he ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him and brought him to his house. And he told Laban all these things. And Laban said to him, Surely you are my bone and my flesh. And he abode with him the space of a month. And Laban said unto Jacob, Because thou art my brother's shoulders, I mean my brother, shouldest thou therefore save me for naught? Tell me, what shall thy wages be? And Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah was tender-eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. Huh. And Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will save thee seven years for Rachel, thy young daughter. Now, I just want to uh, bring this into your attention. Okay? First of all, from the Bible we just read here, what is our attention tonight? This is a story of a man by the name Jacob. Jacob had just received a blessing from his father. Okay? We know the, the father, Isaac, had just blessed him. He had st stolen a blessing from, 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 from Esau. And ran away and went to Laban. Now, Laban says, I want you to stay with me for a month. But he says, no. I will stay with you for seven years. And all I want to marry is Rachel. Now, that's very important to notice. Laban from what we read in the scriptures, we find that he is more than just a human being. It is a spiritual system. There are people in the Bible who were not just humans. There was a spiritual system behind them. One of them is, we speak about a lady, a woman called Jezebel. Now, if you read the book of the New Testament, we're going to hear a lot of moments where the Bible speaks of Jezebel spirit. Now, it's no longer a personality. It is a principality. Now, just the same like that, we talk of the same over Laban. Laban, I want you to see something here that is important, gives Jacob an offer to say, I want you to be here for a month, but I'm going to give you what you need. And Jacob says, I want to marry your daughter. And I'll work for seven years, and I need this payment. And as we go, because of time, we'll find out that eventually, when he worked for seven years, the Bible speaks of when he wanted to marry Rachel. Huh. The Bible says, at night. In those days, it was not like when you come in church, and stand in front of the altar and say, I do. To death set us apart. No, there was nothing like that. If you were marrying, at night, they would put you in a room. It was dark. Okay? They will just bring your wife and put her in a room and lock you. In the morning, they will declare you married. 
So he had worked for seven years looking for Rachel. The night to be given a wife, it was dark, no electricity. He's in the house waiting for his wife. He's given a woman. In his mind, this is Rachel. In the morning, it was not Rachel. It was Leah. And the Bible says that Rachel, she was the most beautiful and the most favored. Now, the Bible says that she was well favored, most favored. Now, he has worked for seven years. And when a moment for harvest came, he is given and favored and wanted and expected harvest. He's given a different thing. And he wakes up in the morning. He says, ah, I never wanted, I never worked for this. And Laban says, listen, this is how we do things here. There is a Labanic spirit that you see you work for this. And you have a different type of harvest. And the answer to that is, this is how we do things. This is how the system of Laban is. Where you are given not what you deserve. You are given what Labanic spirit deserve you should receive. Now, now, now. Are you ready for this? Now, the Lord spoke to me about it and he said we need to pray because I am sensing this spirit so strong. More especially for the next few months from now. Most people are already experiencing it. Where you work so much and have a different result. What you didn't want to receive, it is what you expect. And what you never expected. Can you imagine you working so hard and putting so much your effort over something? But in return, you are given a different outcome. God says to not, we must pray that what you've been believing God for must be exactly what you're believing God for. And I believe tonight somebody is going to receive this. If you believe, raise up a hand and say, in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of Laban will not affect my life anymore. So what is the spirit of Laban? The spirit of Laban is a spirit of manipulation. Where you, 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 your profits are manipulated. Your harvest is manipulated. Your expectations are manipulated. Do you know there are some women today and there are some men today who have married a wrong person and they're regretting like, I don't know why I married this person because of the spirit of Laban. But what I'm saying here is this. The spirit of Laban can actually manipulate a person. In fact, Jacob didn't want Leah. He wanted Rachel. What he wanted, he didn't get it. And the Lord spoke to me directly. What is happening in the spirit scope? Do you know, people sometimes just leave, you wake up in the morning and you go. But you need to have prophetic intelligence of what is going on in the world. And the reason why people in church are struggling today is because they do not have intelligence. They don't know why they are suffering. They don't know who is planning their downfall. You are there just standing like this. You do not even know who is planning your downfall. You don't even know how many people are planning for you to fall. So you, all you know is I'm married. But you don't know what is going on in your marriage. Who's planning the downfall of your marriage. And this is why you, want, you need to understand that in the spirit realm, we do not play with intelligence. Now, in the spiritual realm now, the intelligence is somewhere, somehow, someone is planning to sabotage your harvest. No, no, you, you, you're not answering what I'm saying. Somebody somewhere is planning to sabotage, to play around your intelligence. But somebody raise up a hand and say tonight, whatever spirit, working against my harvest, I command it out. Say, by the name of Jesus. Tonight, I receive what I deserve. Tonight, I receive what I deserve. Whatever I plan is what I will harvest. Every Labanic spirit 
who will no longer be in my life. By the name of Jesus. By the name of Jesus. By the name of Jesus. Now, as we continue the scriptures and the sharing of the word. Hmm. In verse 26, the Bible says, let me start from verse 25. And it says, and it came to pass that in the morning, behold, it was Leah. And he said to Laban, what is this? <laughs> what is this? Thou hast done unto me. Did not I save with thee for Rachel? Wherefore then hast thou begun me? Now look, look, look it from NIV translation. In NIV, it says, when morning came, there was Leah. So Jacob said to Laban, what is this you have done to me? I saved you for Rachel, didn't I? Why have you deceived me? Why have you deceived me? And what's the answer? Laban replied, it is not our custom here to give the younger daughter in marriage before the older one. So all the seven years I was working for, you didn't know this? No, he knew it. But it's just a system of Laban. And I want you to understand something here. The spirit of Laban is working so much in so many people's lives. You have worked for something nice and you are getting something opposite. Even when Jacob wanted to leave, Laban didn't want to let him go. Because Laban will manipulate the system so that you do not receive your deliverance. Now, if you check the scriptures, you'll find out it was more than just Laban. Are you understanding what I'm trying to say? In chapter 31, you'll find out that Laban had a spirit. The Bible speaks of a certain God which Laban was using. It is that spirit which had the powers of manipulation. So is it possible that I can be under this spell? It is possible. We have so many people today who are working so hard and they have got different results. Do you know why? The Labanic spirit. Where you work so much and you get nothing. In fact, your expectations. I have seen so many people who they can have money in their hands like this. Okay, a lot of money. A lot of money. And the money will finish and they want to do something substantial. And God sent me tonight to pray with such people. If you give me money now and you give the same amount of money to somebody and give us five months, we may have that other somebody completely have nothing to show and I will show you something. Not because they are bad planners. Not because they, they are not thinking. But sometimes, of course, it could be bad business models, but sometimes it is a spell. We have a person doing the same business, doing the same thing, but having bad results. And another person doing the same thing, same organization structure, good results. What is the issue? The issue is if Jacob, a blessed man, who had a blessing from the father Isaac, a man who God appeared in Bethel, angels going up and down over his life, and singing and telling him and God coming down and speaking to his life. Yet when he went to Laban, he began to struggle. It is possible that you too can be under a particular spell. Until Jacob realized something is wrong in the spirit, Jacob discovered a need deliverance out of Laban. It is how he dealt with the Labanic spirit. And I want to tell you something as a prophet, I can sense it. That somebody is watching me now and things are going so bad and you don't understand what is really going on. Where am I wrong? And even some people are working. They are even bosses. In fact, in your work, maybe you are even a manager. But the life of your junior is even much better than your own life. It is not just happening. There is a spell. There is something wrong which we must command and must go. There is something that is taking place. 
Some of you, it is not to do with you, but your own brothers. You have tried to take money and give them to support them. But until today, if you look at your brother like this, you feel sorry. Because it's not him. He is operating under a spell. Tonight, I want you to stand on the gap for your brother. Tonight, I want you to stand on the gap for your sister. Tonight, stand on the gap for your family. What is happening to your family members, it is not normal. Something is going on and it is spiritual. And only a spiritual man can deliver a person who is under spiritual attack. And tonight, I command that attack to come out in the name of Jesus. To come out in the name of Jesus. To come out in the name of Jesus. Raise your hand if you believe. Raise your hand if you believe. Wherever you are. Wherever you are, raise up your hands and believe. Because something great is taking place tonight. Something big is happening tonight. Where you are right now, I just want you to think about it. As you raise your hands up, just think in any area where you feel Labanic spirit going on. Whether in your faith, whether in your prayer, whether in your career, whether in your family, your own children. Maybe sometimes your own calling. Maybe your own ministry. In fact, some of you, your own workplace, your own workplace, you always get what you don't deserve. Something must happen tonight. Let the change happen. May God remember you for this very moment in time. Let something happen. I decree over your life. I speak into your spirit. I speak into your family. I decree into your future. I speak into your company. I speak into your marriage. I speak into your relationship. In the name of Jesus, may something new begin to happen. May a shift begin to happen. Clap your hands and make a prayer where you are. Let change take place. Let change happen. Let deliverance take place. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you where you are. May you begin to deserve. May you begin to receive what you deserve. May you begin to experience exponential growth in everything you do. In everything you do, I decree on behalf of your family, your children, your sister, your husband, your wife, in the name of Jesus, let spirit of love come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. Rabba Sika Kataya. You hear this? Somebody has a degree, a certificate, qualifications, but what are they getting in the return? No job. No employment. One is going on. Some people are graduating today and they're getting a job today. Is it that you can't be employed? What is really going on? Something wrong is going on here. Some of you, your own parents, they are so much into poverty that you don't even understand. Some of you, you were born in it from those families. Not because they're supposed to be poor. Not because they're supposed to be struggling, but because the spirit of Laban that manipulates the system and tells you it does not go on the way you think. It happens how we want. Tonight, as I pray with you, begin to see that change happening. Because I can see in the realm of the spirit, in the next two months, God will be preparing things and rearranging things. Things which were wrong will become right. Things which were lost, they will be found. Things which were confused, there will be no more. There will be rearrangement of events. The spirit of Laban will be dismantled. Deliverance is coming. Somebody say yes. Somebody say yeah. There is something that is shifting in the realm of the spirit. Hear this. The Bible says when, 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 when Laban came over, he said, you know, when we talk with these type of things, there are people who are hearing this message and, and, and they really want to change. After this program, they, they will forget about it. But I want you to make a decision tonight and think about this message. And think, who is the prophet talking about? You will find out I'm talking to you as a person. This is a personal message and I don't know who I'm talking to. But listen to me. Gone are so many years. By now, your life was supposed to be somewhere. Something really wrong is happening. Should we say you're not working? Maybe you're working. 
Should we say maybe you're not looking for a job? Maybe you're actually looking for. Should we say that you don't deserve promotion? Maybe you actually do. Should we say you don't have career? You do. Should we say you don't have skill? You do. Some of you, you're very good football players. But there's something wrong. There is a particular system that has caged them in a certain predicament. But there is power in the name of Jesus. There's a reason why Jesus Christ came. He said, I have come. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to do what? To preach the gospel. All right. Among the things he said what? He said to set free those who are captives. To set them free. It is not good to still remain a captive. Well, Jesus can set you free. And I believe as I'm speaking to you, know exactly like I'm talking to you. Some of you is your husband. Nothing is moving well. Nothing is nothing substantial. Nothing to, to show your husband is having right now. Some of you is your own wife. Some of you is both. It is not because your husband is not a hard worker. It's not because your wife, she's not a hard worker. But there is a system of Laban. A system that makes what he works for get twisted. But tonight we are fixing it. Now, if, if I were you, I could shout the loudest amen. Amen. Something is about to twist. Something is about to change. Something is about to happen. I said something is about to happen. I'm sensing someone watching me and somebody's right here in here in this conference room and I'm sensing in my spirit that you're being bothered by this message. As I'm talking, you feel like he's talking to me and he's talking to my family and I feel that so strong in my spirit and I can feel that you have been praying over it and what I'm, I'm sharing with you is just a confirmation. But for a long time, you have been feeling the same. That there is something going on in my life. Something is not right. And in fact, some of you, you were even depressed because of the events happening around you. But I want to say, God's power is eminent. He will set you free if you believe tonight. I want you to see what will begin to happen. Set up a moment of two months from now. Begin to observe events that will begin to happen in your life. Begin to observe what will begin to happen to your sister, your brother, your cousins, your family. I want you to see, you will realize that indeed, prophet, there was a spiritual sabotage. There was a spiritual cage that was happening in my calling. That was happening in my business. Something is about to twist. Something is about to change. Something is about to twist. And it is twisting now. It is twisting now. I decree and I declare. I prophesy to your life. I decree and I declare. I speak to your finances. I speak to your spiritual life. I speak to your earth. This is a moment for you to receive. In the name of Jesus. So I receive it now.